While all my friends swooned over the Super NES, I was always more of a Genesis guy. I loved Sega's willingness to try all kinds of new ideas, and I looked forward to every new series they came up with, both good and bad. But Sega's lost its way over the last 15 years, churning out a steady diet of bad Sonic games and Total War sequels. I sometimes wonder if the Sega that made Streets of Rage, Comic Zone, and Ristar is gone for good. Whenever I get discouraged by the company I once loved, I remember Valkyria Chronicles. Although the series never caught on in the West, this action-strategy role-playing hybrid won me over in a big way. And for as much as I enjoyed the original PlayStation 3 game, I loved the PSP sequel even more. But poor sales doomed the franchise, and Sega opted to keep Valkyria Chronicles in Japan. This is a series that never got the respect it deserved, something that has frustrated me ever since its 2008 debut. But maybe that's about to change, thanks to a brand new remastered port for the PlayStation 4. For those who missed out on the game the first time around, Valkyria Chronicles takes place during a brutal war between the East European Imperial Alliance and the Atlantic Federation in the West. On a trip back to his boyhood hometown, Welkin Gunther accidentally gets arrested and caught up in the middle of the fighting. As the son of a great war hero, Welkin picks up arms and commands a scrappy group of freedom fighters known as Squad 7. This sets up an intense battle over land and power, with the evil Maximilian Gaius von Regenrave plotting a nasty surprise for our heroes. It all culminates in an epic adventure that spans 18 story-heavy chapters and dozens of hours of wartime fun. It's a deep and dark story that's corny at times, but not afraid to go for the emotional punch. Put simply, Valkyria Chronicles mixes the fast-paced action of a third-person shooter with the careful planning of a strategy role-playing game. If you're the type of person who loves the concept of Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre but found them to be a bit too slow, this accessible mashup brings the genre to life like never before. Even as somebody who enjoys the turn-based strategy in those RPGs, I loved seeing these battles from a different perspective. These battles play out on a large plot of land, usually with a different base scattered between the two opposing forces. The idea is to move your soldiers all around the board killing enemies and securing bases. What sets this game apart from Disgaea and the Banner Saga is the fact that you get to control each of the characters' movements, complete with third-person aiming and cover mechanics. While nobody's going to confuse this with Gears of War, this game definitely blurs the line. Even though Valkyria Chronicles often looks like the typical third-person shooter, you still have to use a lot of strategy to win. We're given only a few moves per turn, so we're constantly switching between characters and trying to make the most of their limited time. The characters are split into a few different classes, including the typical stormtroopers, snipers, and guys with missile launchers. Best of all, the game even gives us command over large vehicles like a tank. Although the action may be faster than the typical strategy role-playing game, the actual battles are not. Because there are so many moving parts, fights can drag on for 20 or 30 minutes, sometimes more. Because these battles are so hard fought, that makes the taste of victory that much sweeter. Unfortunately, it also left me entirely deflated by the defeats. It's especially bad when the unexpected loss comes late in the round. I found myself retrying some missions multiple times, each time with a little less enthusiasm. As unorthodox as the gameplay is, Valkyria Chronicles suffers from a lot of the same problems that plague most traditional strategy role-playing games. Because of the way it's structured, I found myself completely disconnected from the story. Each chapter is split into a bunch of non-interactive cinemas, followed by a fight. I enjoyed the over-the-top characters and some of the goofiness, but I wish the story beats were better infused with the action. Apart from how the game plays, Valkyria Chronicles is also known for its art style, using a look that resembles the kind of classic pencil-drawn comic books and graphic novels, the game has a distinct style that oozes with personality. It already looked great on the PlayStation 3, and now it looks slightly better on Sony's newest console. The boost in frame rate and resolution is nice, but it's not as big of a leap as other remastered collections. 
It's also disappointing that Sega didn't add more content for this PlayStation 4 port. If you've played the game on PS3 or Steam, then there's nothing new to see here. But given that the original release never hit PSN and was not always easy to come by in stores, chances are that a lot of players will just now discover it for the first time. Even though I prefer the bite-sized nature of the PSP sequel, I can't deny how good Valkyria Chronicles Remastered is on the PlayStation 4. The frustrating moments were overshadowed by a lengthy quest and fun third-person shooter strategy role-playing mashup action. Even if it's not a genre you normally enjoy, Valkyria Chronicles offers just enough excitement to bring in a whole new audience. Now, bring on a proper sequel. Hey, thanks for watching our review. Like I said a few days ago, we're light on content this week. This just ended up being a busy time, and there was nothing I could do about it. But don't worry, we should be back to normal next week. I'm working on reviews of Hyper Bounce Blast, Tales from the Void, and Odin Sphere on both PlayStation 4 and Vita. Oh, and we're about to introduce a brand new series of YOLO, as well as another new exciting preview show. So do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.